This is a clip from the Chris Break Show podcast. Good day to you, sir. Oh, hey, Dale. What's up, man? What's happening? Not much. How are you doing? Doing just fine. That's good. <laughs> Segway. All right. Hey, man. Segway. Yeah, I was riding a Segway the other day, and I came up to you, and I gave you a call, and I said, hey, man. What are you doing? I dude, I'm fucking lost. What tell Monster Bum, right? Tell me, are we are we gonna get the number two of the Monster Bum series tonight? Yes. All right. Is it gonna be under six minutes? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be under six minutes. It's not what you think. It's not like you want to retell that story or something. No, it's good. That's just exa- we have exactly six minutes, so we want to hear it for sure. Monster Bum number one was was definitely a classic. Can't wait to hear number two. Uh huh. Uh-huh. All right, so Dale, what happened today? Tell me a story. Tell me a tale. Tell me a Dale tale. When are we starting? Right now? Oh yeah, you're on the show, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's on the show now. <coughs> I'm staring out at the uh, Nashville skyline from the south side of town, up here on the slab that they call. Uh, Slab Mountain, it's where all uh, traveling musicians and bums and humbums and hobos all come to, you know, retire on a piece of concrete rather than a bush somewhere, and, and uh, you're outside society. When you look and you just see all these lights out there and the stadium and uh, big fancy buildings and whatnot, it looks like real pristine, but when you take a magnifying glass to the thing, there's people like myself down there just uh, struggling to get by. I'll tell you what, life finds a way. Oh, yes, it does. That guy in the alley who was like, get the fuck out of my house. You know, that probably took him a long time to get to that point. You know what I mean? He found himself a secure little spot. Nobody's fucking with him. And he doesn't fuck with anybody. You know, maybe he goes out and begs, and begs for change or whatever. But I, I know the struggle. You know what I mean? I think he was fucking and, with uh, somebody. Coming down he was here. fucking with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so you're on Slab, coming down here, slab Mountain. It's like coming down to with the security of a job and all that good stuff that's great and all but you know you just take into the account that uh, there's things out here uh, when you gotta sleep out in the woods because you can't find no house and and uh, you get these things called chiggers and these chiggers they, they infest you like 50 at a time and they bite you and then the bite turns into a blister and then the blister pops and then your, your blue jeans rub against it in 95 degree weather with 100 percent humidity and it gets infected all the while you still got to make it to work and you don't have a car, so you wake up in a bush with the goddamn sugar bites all over your legs, and you've got your little lizard companion with you that you've had for eight years and you refuse Aww. to let go of. So you hop on a bicycle that you bought for 50 bucks that gets stolen six days later. Either way, you ride all the way halfway there and it starts storming, so you go underneath of a bridge, and you're so exhausted that you fall asleep on some rocks. And when you do wake up, you're like, oh, God, if I don't get to work in 20 minutes, I'm going to be completely late. But when you wake up, you find out that the left side of your body has completely fallen asleep because you've laid on rocks and it's pushed all your nerve endings. So now the left part of your body doesn't work. You hop on a bicycle. You're pedaling through a rainstorm carrying a sack with a live lizard in it. And your front tire is half flat. You know, all to just swing in there and just, you know, just like. Well, uh, you're supposed to be there at 7, it's 6.59, and the boss would be like, how's it going? How was your morning? <laughs> going great, sir. <laughs> and all the while, these chiggers are all just scratching you, itching them, and scratching you, itching them, you know, and you work your shift, and then you wander back out into the goddamn 100 degree heat, and you're wandering around and wandering around, and you don't have any money because you're in the trade picture, blah, 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 and you got to find a place to sit, you know, and you go, I want to go sit over here. And you go, oh, sit over there. And you see these guys walking around. I mean, back in my hometown, there was a guy named Burnside, and everybody said that he did acid back in, like, 1975. And his girlfriend got in a car wreck and died while he was on acid, and somebody told him, and he lost his shit completely. All he did was walk around town, smoke cigarettes, and drink Gomar coffee. That's a convenience store in West Virginia. And just sat in the corner, and then he walked over to another corner and smoked. And if it started raining and storming, he'd just sit there and smoke it. Because he had it. You know, what could he do? Nothing stuck. And, uh... I finally had to take that lizard of mine as I was trucking him everywhere with me. He came to work. I hit him. I took him to the hostel that I was checking to every once in a while, took the and lizard, I hide him under the bed. You look, took the lizard to work. So That's you're, right. You're toting around homeless uh, with a lizard when you did have a home, and uh, now you have to That's carry. Right. Now you have to carry this little guy around and feed him. That's right. I caught cockroaches for him in the parks at nighttime, <laughs> oh, and I give him water in the God. daytime. And I look into his little cage, his little cage in my little philosopher bag, and I say, "Don't worry, buddy. It's going to get better. 
you got to live in this little cage for now, and then I, I got to live outside. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So finally, they found him at the hostel, and they said, dude, he's got to go, or you got to go, or whatever. And I'm like, all right. So I went and hit him for a night out in the, by the river. And then the next day, I called all the places to be like, can someone please take this homeless lizard? Someone would take this homeless lizard. And everyone was like, no, we don't want that lizard because he's really mean. They bite. They don't let go. Blah, blah, blah. So the, the herpiculture community in Nashville, Tennessee, wanted nothing to do with this lizard. Just like, apparently, all the housing people don't want anything to do with me. Because, like, his aggressive attitude is, like, the equivalent of my non-existent credit. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I just walked as far out as I could in the bushes, and I finally set him down and let him go. And I said, well, run, bunny, run. And he didn't run, you know, and I thought that he would. And then I tried to pick him up, and he wanted to bite the shit out of me. Uh, I'm just guessing that the natural instincts would have kicked in, and he'll just be fine out there, little man. And that was uh, two months ago. So he's either out there. And after eight years, he's only got like a nine to ten year life expectancy. I'm going to hope that uh, he had a nice, if he, if he did get eaten by something, at least he got to live in the wild for a while rather than be cooped up in a 30-gallon tank. You know what I mean? That's insane. And uh, sometimes, when you, sometimes when you do have a housing, you know, I had it all last year. I was paying rent on time. I was going to work. I was getting there. I was paying all the bills. You know, the cycle. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. I want to clean the house. I want to walk in the house. I want to pay money for a house. Pay money for a box, you know? And so that becomes so routine that uh, part of me wonders, it's like, well, well, are you really in any hurry to get back into it? Because, you know, stuff happens. But um, that's the most important situation is that uh, people know that you aren't completely accommodated. You don't have that comfortable look, you know. I didn't just rise out of bed. I rose from a concrete slab, and I'm here, and I barely slept, you know what I mean, to the point where I'm, like, hallucinating halfway through the day. And people are like, I'm tired. I watched TV until midnight, and then I just ate some chips, and I just couldn't sleep. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> but I mean, we're like motherfucker. I've been eating cockroaches, <laughs> sleeping on rocks. You know, some people go through. Some people have traumatic experiences that that you know, and that turn them into these these street wonders. And other people just do it out of choice. I met a guy a couple summers ago while you know hoboing around through the cracks of civilization. He was like, I, I don't like the indoors, man. I did a lot of time when I was younger. I don't like being locked up. And he looked out at the park, and he goes, I got the river, I got the sky, I got the ducks, and they call me homeless. They call me homeless. Can you believe that? I said, I feel you, man. I feel you. And then he starts We're going to get by, boys. We're going to get by because, uh, you know, it, it, to, get, to get so, to get accustomed to, to comfort is, is, the, is the bad thing, you know. The whole, my shirt sticking to my back because it's a little bit humid in here. That's the least of my concerns at the moment. You know what I mean? It's, 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 oh, a, it's a fleeting, it's a fleeting little, little sensation. You know what I mean? And the older you get and the more you put yourself through, and I mean put yourself through by like I'm making the choice to not be completely pampered right now, uh, the, the thinner the wall between pleasure and pain becomes. And you just acknowledge it for this and acknowledge it for that. It's like, that feels good. That's, doesn't feel so good, but I'm going to endure it no matter what, because life is the great indulgence of sensation and experience and light and sound and, and laughter. And death is the great abstinence of it. There's the great void, just complete gone. Just... All right, Dale, well, we're out of time. Thanks you for... Did he hang up? He did. He hung I knew up. It. I could feel that hang up coming. <laughs> I could feel that. That was Dale J. Gordon, Nashville recording artist. He'll he'll have a house soon. I know he will. He, he's a good guy. Go check him out. D A L E space letter J Gordon. I want to thank the 405 Media, Mr. John G. I want to thank Darren Snyder at Indian Tune. You know what we forgot to do? Secret Lover. Oh man. <laughs> I want to take this time to thank Secret Lover Podcast at Secret Lover Pod for being the number one Dawson's Creek champs. And thanks to Lauren Chris Sisner for making the questions. I forgot to thank her. And thank you to Radio Fubar who should be putting us live soon. <sighs> thanks to David Ali for talking to us uh, about his hospital Slenderman experience. ChrisBreakShow.com From the Chris Break Show Podcast